certainly are not, Mr. Spader. And it feels like they've gotten it right again, but we will find out tomorrow at the screening. Right now, let's get to crossing the streams. The Avengers Age of Ultron. Thank you, BFR, for the incredible imaging for this segment. I am joined by the entertainment editor for IGN on the Mitsubishi Electric Cooling Hotline. Roth Cornett is my guest on Crossing the Streams. Roth, great to talk to you. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? Today? I have a little cold, so you may hear that in my voice. Well, I'm mediocre on the radio, and we're both still here, so <laughs> no harm, you no foul. You are well. amazing on the radio. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's your sound. Very nice of you. Um, all right, so this movie is a big movie. It's going to make an enormous amount of money, and we all know that. Has any of the gleam come off the Avengers brand just because since the first one came out, we have been absolutely deluged by superhero movies and television <laughs> shows? Um, that's, an interesting, that's a very interesting question. You know, I don't know if the glean has come off it. I actually think, if anything, because Winter Soldier and Guardians were so well-received, and such big hits and they're excellent movies that if anything the bar has actually been risen a bit and that the expectation level for this movie if, if anything it may suffer from expectations and the weight of expectations how about the criticisms that the franchise has received i oftentimes think people are looking for reasons to be pissed off i mean as far as not having enough women characters or minority characters or blah 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 do you watch these movies? Do those thoughts run through your head? Because I'm always shocked when I get online and find out how offended people are. Um, are you talking about the, the star joke comment that Evans and Runner made? That well, one? I'm just talking about that this movie suffered from some of those criticisms like most big blockbuster movies now that, uh, you know, whenever they're casting, who's going to be in the thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll just say this. I think that Chris Evans is a total gentleman, and I really think they were just joking on that thing. Sure. And thing is that they're tired, and it was a joke. Long day. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's such a broad question. In terms of Avengers, I actually love Black Widow, mm -hmm. and um, I think that Joss Whedon is inarguably an excellent director for women. I mean, look at Buffy, among other things. Um that is just a far bigger question. It is. <laughs> it's a difficult about one for us to discuss here in five minutes. Yeah. What about the way it's being reviewed and the fact that you have people posting full... I, I don't know how you are going into one of these things. I'd rather not even see a trailer. I'd rather not know anything. Now, when the trailers come out on TV and I watch them and I see the Hulkbuster uh, armor, I get as fired up as anybody else does. But it's a situation now where there's so much coverage because you guys... The demand is there. People want to see it. How do you kind of balance how much information you put out there about this movie so that the details are not given away? Yeah, that's a really hard thing to do. And we talk about it constantly because we don't want to ruin it for anybody. And we, we really don't want to, like, have spoilers or put people's expectations too high so that they won't enjoy the movie. It's tough. It's a really tough balance. Um, because you also really have to cover it and people are thirsty for information. So I think it's up to the individual. There are movies that I like to just stay away from so that I can go in fresh. I think it'd be hard to do with the Avengers, though. It is going to be hard. It's at Roth Cornett uh, on Twitter. You can also read her on IGN. I noticed that you have, I mean, this is off the topic, but you have an Oscar Isaac interview up on IGN.com. I saw Ex Machina this weekend, pleasantly surprised, knew nothing about it going in, thought it was a very good movie and it took me a while to kind of decide how I felt about it after I got out of the theater and I, I always love movies that are like that. What were your impressions of it? I love that movie. I think it's just excellent sci-fi. It's so smart. It's a thriller. I was left thinking about it for a long time after I was done. We had a great talk about it, Oscar Isaac and I, and just in terms of like the themes in it and the questions about that ending and who your sympathies were with. Who are your sympathies with, by the way? I didn't think... It's I didn't really, it was difficult for me to decide who the antagonist was. Yeah. I, I guess, uh, I guess an and uh, you know what, I don't want to spoil it. I, yeah. I, that's another reason why I love the movie. It reminded me of There Will Be Blood, where at the end I'm like, well, I guess he's the bad guy, but it's a character that I'm kind of wrapped up in. It, it's one of those movies that makes you think. Yeah, it really does. Man, I love this movie. But I have to say my sympathies, ultimately, at the end of the day, were with Tom Hall Gleason's character, I Caleb. Guess. 
that poor guy. <laughs> we won't say what happened, but um, man, it's such a good movie. He kind of reaps what he sows, though. I thought most of the people in that movie reaped what they sowed. You're right. They do, but don't we all? Yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> Roth, can't wait to see this flick, Avengers, and we'll have you back on to discuss it. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Yep, at Roth Cornette, give her a follow. Let's continue. The Avengers Age <laughs> of Ultra. I mean, this might be the best imaging of all time. Sean O'Connell, movie content director for Cineblend on the Mitsubishi Electric Cooling Hotline, joins me. Um, and Sean, this movie's going to make a billion dollars. How difficult do you think it was for Marvel to come back and with all the grandeur and the fact that it was received well to then say, all right, let's have another whack at this thing and let's meet the measuring stick that we had before? That must have been a grand undertaking for them. Yeah, but they can't think of it that way, though. They have a master plan that's going to carry them all the, way, all the way through 2019, and they have to sort of tune out what fan expectation is and just sort of deliver on what their vision is. We've been having a really interesting discussion just today about the difference between the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC Cinematic Universe, because one is really planned out and has a great firm grip on what's going on, and the other one is just sort of throwing things yeah. up and seeing what sticks. And so Marvel knows what they're doing. Avengers Age of Ultron proves that the plan is working really, really well because they've layered a number of very interesting storylines together. Some of them come to pass here. Some of them set up things that are going to be coming. So for that reason, it really works well for fans. But I'm hearing from people, and I get this, that if you're not plugged into everything Marvel's been doing, you might be a little lost. Okay, and I am. I could not be more plugged in. I'm nakedly plugged into what Marvel's doing, so I think I'm going to enjoy myself. That was going to be my next question. Nerds can be very picky. They can be very geeky. They get very upset when there are changes made. You know, the origin of Ultron is very different in the books than it is in this movie. Do you think nerds are, like me are going to be satisfied with it? Absolutely. Um, because it does so many things right. Um, there's a number of things that I don't want to necessarily give away right Thank now. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, certain characters, certain plot points, things that are going to have you so blown away by how well they nailed it that, yeah, I'll admit Ultron didn't come together the way that I might have wanted it to or the way that you might have envisioned in the book. But, but again, you have to sort of realize the books have a lot of time to develop. They have several months and years to develop storylines, and this one has to work as its own little standalone movie, which, of course, is still part 11 in an ongoing thread, which I'm amazed that they've been able to sustain as well as they have. So you're going to take some, some bad with some extremely good when it comes to this movie, and I think that the ratio is at least 90 to 10 in terms of the stuff that blew me away versus the stuff that I wanted to nitpick. Great to hear. Uh, it's at Sean underscore O'Connell on Twitter, Cinema Blend. He is the movie content director over there. How do they weave the new characters in? We know the Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch. We're seeing some additions here. I, I thought that the, uh, the chemistry between the original cinematic Avengers was very, very good. Are they able yeah. to work in these new characters? Yeah, this is what Joss Whedon, I think, has to get the best credit for, is that he understands all of these characters. He figures out how to give each of them a time to shine. They all have something important to do in, in major action set pieces. It's still sort of Downey's show. Uh, almost everything that takes place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe goes through Downey, and that doesn't change here. Um, and, you know, I will say there's one or two guys that probably get a little bit shortchanged, and then they overcompensate for Hawkeye this time because there's a running joke through this about how he was really non-existent in the first movie. There's at least four <laughs> or five jokes to that. But Renner is so good, and actually all of them are so good, that when they get their moment, they kill it. So even someone like Don Cheadle gets a few small moments, and all of them are gold. And Whedon's so good about just making sure he writes the perfect material and he gets the right delivery out of those people so all those little small moments you'll appreciate inside of this epic saga excellent glad to hear it you're telling me what i need to hear sean i appreciate it. let's talk again after everybody's seen the thing anytime there he is sean o'connell movie content director for cinema blend let's get to my buddy ed the avengers <laughs> age of ultra i just can't get enough of that i want that as my ringtone as soon as we get out of here today uh eric davis editor for fandango movies.com on twitter at eric davis and so much to talk about with this franchise and it's just unbelievable what they've accomplished eric when you look at this and you look at the job josh whedon has done how much confidence should there be when he kind of hands the baton off, he passes the mantle to somebody else? Because I think you can directly attribute a lot of the success of why all these movies have worked because of his good works. Yeah, no, I completely agree. But 
then again, you can't kind of uh, sort of drain him into the ground because he's a guy that he seems a little beat down. You know, yes, he's been so successful, and yes, I think he's injected the right kind of nerdy humor that all of these Marvel movies needed, uh, and he's responsible for that, responsible for the Avengers, a lot of the storylines in the connecting movies, as well as Age of Ultron. Give the dude a break now. Uh, I think that the directors that they have replacing him sort of on the next Avengers, the Captain America uh, Winter Soldier directors, Anthony and Joe Russo, these guys really know what they're doing. I think they get it. Uh, I think that they've already proven that they can deliver a heck of a movie. I thought Winter Soldier was great. Uh, they're going to come back with Captain America Civil War next May, which is almost like another Avengers movie with yeah. how many characters are going to be in it. And then they're going to give them the two-part Avengers movies. To be honest with you, yeah, you kind of say that should be Joss Whedon's movie, but I think Age of Ultron really beat him up, and uh, I think it's time to let somebody else sort of with some fresher legs kind of go at that old age of Ultra, uh, the, the, the last movie, the Infinity War, especially when they're coming off Civil War, they're sort of be in that mindset. Uh, and I think they'll do a good job. It's crazy because it looks like that he's doing what George Lucas was so reluctant to do for so many years and kind of let loose of the reins and get some different creative minds in there to kind of work with what he established. And I think that it's admirable. I've had people say that have seen this movie, it's very similar to the first. I, I don't want to give out too many details, but do we get to see the team working together more? Or do they draw a lot from the original movie other than just continuing the storyline? How different of an experience is this one? Yeah, well, that's what my favorite part of the movie is, is that we just get so much more of the team together right out of the gate. Don't get, don't be late to this movie. Don't be walking in 10 minutes late with your girlfriend because they, right out of the gate, there's a gigantic action sequence. It's probably the one that feels the most like the action sequence in New York at the end of the Avengers, just because they're having a lot, they're having a good time, they're just having fun being the Avengers, and those kinds of sequences are really fun to watch before the movie gets a little bit dark and a little bit uh, more drama is added to it, but yeah, man, I mean, the action, the Hulk uh, Iron Man fight alone, I think is going to go down as probably one of the top three fights in uh, all of these Marvel movies. It is just fantastic to watch. Great. And just a lot more of the team together, which is what you want to see, I think, in a sequel. That was clearly the tentpole from the initial trailers, people freaking out for that. Is any of the bloom off the rose, Eric, because of the announcements that you talked about? Because we know Civil War is coming, because we know that Thanos is coming, because we know all this, these giant things are happening, is it less special because we know there's so much more in store? You know, I don't know if it's less special. I think we got to the, event, the end of the Avengers, and we said, we just want to see more of that. That scene was awesome in New York. And so this movie is them basically saying, okay, we're going to give you the last scene in the Avengers. We're going to give you an entire movie like that because you guys want it. And then after that, we're going to really switch it up. I think Captain America Civil War is not going to be the Avengers Part 3. I think it's going to tear apart the team. It's going to introduce a lot more characters, and it's going to introduce, introduce a whole new kind of storyline that they're going to take into the Infinity War. So I think kind of enjoy this, enjoy kind of Age of Ultron as an extension of the Avengers, but then get ready because they're going to switch it up. They know a lot of these superhero movies are coming out. They know they can't keep giving you the same exact thing over and over again. So they're smart. They're going to switch it up. I really like what I'm seeing at Civil War. I think it's going to be a cool movie. Awesome. Really great stuff to hear. At Eric Davis, go ahead and give him a follow. Let's talk again after. Have everybody seen the thing, Eric? You got it, man. Uh, tomorrow night out at the Starplex in Ashburn, I will be hosting the screening. If you won tickets on this show or on this stage, you know that I'm just as excited as you are. It should be a blast. And that was my favorite segment of the week.